Welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother Zach Wah. This is your brother Kasafo. We have a great, exciting lesson for you guys today going along with our series and just truly powerful teachings. We hope that everybody's been enjoying the lessons. This lesson right here that we're going into is the spiritual mind and perspective. And this is going to be an essential lesson for your walk, for your growth, for edification, for insight, for guidance. So that you can examine yourself according to the spirit and not of the flesh. So that we can get away from being fleshly minded and carnally minded to becoming true spiritual beings in Alahayim, in Yache. Kasi, you mind reading for us? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24 to 27. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. So we're all running this race. We're all running, trying to obtain the goal in Meshiaka. We're all running for a reason. We're purpose-driven. And every man that striveth for master is temperate in all things. Right. So you need temperance. You can't be tossed to and fro. You got to know what you're doing what you're going for, what's your aim, or else you're just going to be all over the place. And you're not going to win the race. If I'm running in zigzags and you're running straight, nine times out of ten, you're going to beat me, no matter if you're faster or slower than me. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So they may do it being half-hearted. They may do it for the vain glory. They may do it just to please men or look a certain way in the sight of men, but we do it for an incorruptible crown of the heart, of the spirit, of the mind, of the soul, of the body. Knowing who we're doing it for, having that good inclination, and doing things in the right spirit to please Allah I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. Right? So we're not running uncertainly. We know what we're going for. We know what we're running to. We know what we're running for. We know what we're trying to obtain and we know the goal. So we're not running uncertainly. We're running in faith and hope. The faith of that eternal crown that we're going to get. We know what we're running for. And we can't forget what we're running for. We have to endure until the end. Go ahead, Casa. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. We're not fighting, not knowing what we're fighting against. At least we shouldn't be. We know what's against us. We know the spirits that attack us. We know the tests that we go through in the world each and every day. We're not just beating the air. We're not just swinging at Way anything. Of insight. <laughs> right. We know what's against us. We shouldn't be out here as if we don't know what we're doing. We should be out here with a purpose, knowing what's against us, knowing what we're dealing with, knowing what's going on within ourselves. And the things that are going on around us and the things that are trying to pull us down and take us away from the glory of Allah and take us away from the goal. If something is stopping you from getting to the finish line, then that's something that you should be aware of. We shouldn't be swinging at the air. Paul wasn't swinging at the air. Everything that we do, we should be making a purposeful move with everything that we're doing. If we're doing things without a purpose, then we're swinging against the air. If you're doing something and you have to come to grips with it and say, what was I thinking? You're swinging against the air. As believers, we're supposed to be purpose-driven people walking with that purpose every day intently. Walking with the focus intently every day. Right. Paul wasn't walking blind. Paul wasn't just swinging in the air. 
Paul knew exactly what was against him and what he needed to do. And if he didn't know, he learned and humbled himself in every step that he made with purpose. If we don't know why we're doing the things that we're doing or why we're walking the direction, then we need to refocus and find out why and what are we doing. And we need to get help because in running in a race, people get a trainer to help them with their focus. Well, that, that, that takes humility. To ask for help takes humility. To know that you need help and stay in it in the mindset that you need help and you need to learn. Yes. Yes, you have to know you need help. You have to know you need a God. Yeah, that's true. Like the Ethiopian man in the book of Acts. He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? But you know what pride does? Pride hinders you from hearkening to a prophet. So even if you have a guide, pride will come in. And you won't listen to anything they say. How does that prosper you? You won't listen to the words of holiness. Because pride doesn't listen to the words of holiness. It has no ruler. Can we, uh, um, let me get that uh, Testament of Judah. In the Testament of Judah, chapter 17. Beware therefore, my children, of fornication and the love of money, and hearken to Judah your father. For these things will draw you from the law of Allah, and blind the inclination of the soul, and teach arrogance. See, there's a pride you were talking about, Zach. Right, they work together. Continue in reading and teach arrogance and suffer not a man to have compassion upon his neighbor. So you hold grudges? They rob his soul of all goodness and oppress him with toils and troubles. So you have bad inclinations and then you're left with the sorrow from the sins. And drive away sleep from him and devour his flesh. And you can't sleep because the anxiety of the mind. And he hindereth the sacrifices of Allah. And your prayers are hindered because of the pride and the lust and fornication. Whatever that evil spirit is using to, to get you a wanting is the lust that you're after. And he remembereth not the blessings of Allah. He hearkeneth not to a prophet when he speaketh. And he resenteth the words of holiness. For he is a slave to two contrary passions and cannot obey Allah. Because they have blinded his soul, and he walketh in the day as in the night. Uh, that's, that's good. Um, Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Elohim. Elohim is not in all his thoughts. Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16 and 18. We're just touching on pride here so we can see what's hindering somebody who can't who can't see and can't make the right moves or know what's fighting the war against them Sirach 10 and 13 for pride is the beginning of sin and he that hath it shall pour out abomination and therefore Ahiah brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly so when you have a lot of things going on one thing to really examine is are you walking in pride if you have a lot of things coming your direction and you can't get a grip on things, nine times out of ten, pride is in the midst of it. Pride, it stops you from taking a moment to say, hey, something's not right. Let me analyze it. Pride to look at everyone else. Pride to look at everyone else instead of looking at yourself. Pride to make you have a peculiar vision of the reality that you're in or the situation so that you're not wrong in it. So as far as being a student and as far as being a servant, pride can't be in the midst of us. Pride is in the midst of us if we're swinging against the air. 
because that means that we don't know what we're doing and we don't know what we're looking for and that we can't see correctly because if you're swinging at the air and you're not hitting your target, that means that your vision is blurred and it's off. You need someone to help you see. You need a physician. Paul says a lot in his words. Casa, you want to get back to where Paul was, please? Sure. He goes on to say, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. So hold on. So he keeps his body and keeps it under subjection. That means that he's casting down the flesh, casting down the pride, casting down any other spirit of the flesh. Let's read them. Uh, Galatians 5 and 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication. That's also spiritual fornication, hard with idols. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is anything that's impure, physically or morally. Lasciviousness. That's lust. That go into like wantonness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. A hatred is hostility. By implication, a reason for opposition, enmity, hatred. Well, you see that you have a lot of hostility, then you know that you're dealing in hatred. Variance, a quarrel that is wrangling, contention, debate, strife, emulations, that's heat, so that's like that fiery feeling you feel in your chest, and an unfavorable one, jealousy, malice. Envying. So all jealousies, uh, envy, indignation, um, malice, all that goes into emulation. Wrath, which is passion, as if breathing hard. Fierceness, indignation, wrath. So passion, strife. Strife can be as a faction. So that means that you don't like certain people. Or you have a problem with certain people. And you'd rather not deal with them. Faction. Seditions. Division. So disunion. That is figuratively dissension. Division, sedition. So when you start operating in that spirit, when you don't want to deal with certain people or you want to, you don't want to have anything to do with them or you feel some type of way about them, you're operating in the works of the flesh. Heresies. So it's like going off, getting with people and going off. That's why I said a party or disunion because you're, you're, you're coming together and you're coming with another doctrine and getting together and leading people astray. All right. Envians. Like we all know what that is. Envying is when you're jealous of somebody and you want what they have. Jealousy is when you're just jealous of what that person has. You don't necessarily want it for yourself. That's the difference between jealousy and envy. Murders, drunkenness, Reveling, and of course, pride would be in the midst of this as well, and the such like. So we really have to watch what spirit we're operating in, or else we're swinging at the air. 
if we're not aware of what spirit we're operating in, then how can we get to the end of the race? It's like running a race and running through the hurdles instead of jumping over them. How can we get to the goal in Meshiach Yache, blinded? This is for every man to examine themselves. Don't think that you can't be taken over by spirit. Because in no way, shape, or form are any of us on the level that Paul was on. And Paul was even circumspect. At least he be cast away. So let not pride enter in and destroy any of us. Can you continue, Casa? Yeah, sure. He goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be cast away. All right. So he keeps his body in subjection. That means that he controls his body. He controls it. He understands what spirit he's operating in at all times and what spirit is against him. We have to be able to understand what spirit we're operating in and what spirit is leading us and what spirit is against us at any given moment. And we have to be honest with ourselves because if we're telling ourselves a lie, there's no way that we can come out of it. If we tell ourselves a lie, that we've overcame something or that we're over something or something doesn't bother us anymore or affect us anymore. We're only hurting ourselves. We have to speak the truth in our heart and that's the only way that we're going to make it into the kingdom. Speaking the truth in our heart and truly saying, hey, I struggle with this and I need help. I can't figure it out. Hey, this is something that I need to work on and being realistic with yourself. Don't let pride deceive you because that's the whole point of it is to deceive you if you're given into the deception then how can you overcome the deception that you believe how can you overcome the deception that is leading you how can you walk in the new spirit and in the old spirit? How can you walk in the new spirit and the old spirit? We have this notion that we can still be ourselves and walk in the spirit of Elohim. That we don't have to change anything. When the things that define you as a person are the things that are against Elohim, how can we walk in the flesh and in the spirit at the same time? Ask yourself. I'm about to go to Romans. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now, this word, do mind, right? Where it says, for them that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, right? Do mind is G5426. Do mind. To exercise the mind. That is, entertain or have a sentiment or opinion. By implication, to be mentally disposed, more or less earnestly in a certain direction. Intensively, to interest oneself in, with concern or obedience, set the affection on. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all catch it? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Does anybody understand? For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Right? Do mind is G5426. In case somebody wants to read it also. To exercise the mind, that is, entertain, 
or have a sentiment or opinion. By implication, to be mentally disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction, intensively to interest oneself in, with concern or obedience. From what I understand by the definition, if I'm of the fleshly mind, my opinion and my thought process and the disposition of my thought process would be toward fleshly things. Right. My opinion of everything would be fleshly, and my opinion of myself would be fleshly. That's correct. That's correct. Everything's going to be carnal. Your whole existence, your whole mental mindset, your whole mental process, everything is going to be fleshly because that's what you're operating in. Because that's what you mind, that's what you hold, that's what you hold up as a standard. It says you entertain it. You're mentally disposed, given over. That's the direction that you go. Intensively to interest oneself in. You're interested in the carnal, in the flesh. And thinking carnally. And that's what you're obedient to. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Well, that gives a clear dichotomy for self-examination to know where I am in regards to being in the spirit. When my disposition, perception, and opinion of myself is spiritual, then I know I'm walking in the spirit and I'm minding the things of the spirit. Can we go to the Acts of John where Lycomedes wanted the painter to paint a picture of John? Starting in Acts of John, chapter 27. And the painter then on the first day made an outline of it and went away. And on the next he painted him in with colors and so delivered the portrait to Lycomedes to his great joy. And he took it and set it up in his own bedchamber and hung it with garlands, so that later John, when he perceived it, said to him, My beloved child, what is it that thou always doest when thou comest in from the bath into thy bedchamber alone? Do not I pray with thee and the rest of the brethren? Or is there something thou art hiding from us? And as he said this and talked jestingly with him, he went into the bedchamber and saw the portrait of an old man crowned with garlands and lamps and altars set before it. And he called him and said, Lycomedes, what meanest thou by this matter of the portrait? Can it be one of thy alahayams that is painted here? For I see that thou art still living in heathen fashion. And Lycomedes answered him, My only Allah Hayim is he who raised me up from death with my wife. But if, next to that Allah Hayim, it be right that men who have benefited us should be called Allah Hayims, it is thou, Father, whom I have had painted in that portrait, whom I crown and love and reverence as having become my good guide. And John, who had never at any time seen his own face, said to him, Thou mockest me, child. Am I like that in form, my lord? How canst thou persuade me that the portrait is like me? And Lycomedes brought him a mirror. And when he had seen himself in the mirror and looked earnestly at the portrait, he said, As the Lord Yache Christ liveth, the portrait is like me. Yet not like me, child, but like my fleshly image. For if this painter who hath imitated this my face, desire to draw me in a portrait, he will be at a loss. The colors that are now given to thee, and the boards, and plaster, and glue, and the position of my shape, and old age, and youth, and all things that are seen with the eye. But do thou become for me a good painter, Lycomedes. And he said that Lycomedes was seeing him through the flesh, 
through the fleshly lens, you see all these things and you draw me, right? In the flesh, but you can't draw what I really look like. Right? Because it's the, the spirit that we're supposed to be walking and examining ourselves and seeing out of that lens and not a fleshly lens. Acts of John 29. But do thou become for me a good painter like Comedies. Thou hast colors which he giveth thee through me, who painteth all of us for himself, even Yache, who knoweth the shapes and appearances and postures and dispositions and types of our souls. And the colors wherewith I bid thee paint are these. Faith in Allah Hayyam. Knowledge. Allah Hayyamly fair. Friendship. Communion. Meekness, kindness, brotherly love, purity, simplicity, tranquility, fearlessness, grieflessness, sobriety, and the whole band of colors that painteth the likeness of thy soul, and even now raiseth up thy members that were cast down, and leveleth them that were lifted up, and tendeth thy bruises and healeth thy wounds, and ordereth thine hair that was disarranged, and washeth thy face, and chasteneth thine eyes, and purgeth thy bowels, and emptieth thy belly, and cutteth off that which is beneath it. And in a word, when the whole company and mingling of such colors is come together into thy soul, it shall present it to our Lord Yahshua Christ undaunted, whole, unsmooth and firm of shape but this thou hast now done is childish and imperfect thou hast drawn a dead likeness of the dead can you see the spiritual things that john was saying he was he did it, it didn't need to be fleshly because he was of the spirit and he compared himself to the spirit he viewed himself in the spirit to be carnally minded, to mind ourselves in the flesh is death unto us, as it says in Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You see the thing that John had his eyes set on, how he viewed himself? We have to view ourselves the same. We have to get away from the flesh and really start viewing ourselves in the spirit and seeing how do we look in the spirit. How do we look? Are we a beautiful painting in the spirit? Or are we a nightmare? Do we look good in the flesh, but then our soul is rotten? We have to be spiritually minded. We have to have spiritual eyes, seeing ourselves in the spirit. Just like John said, he said in verse 29, in the end he said, when the whole company is a mingled of such colors that come together into thy soul, it shall present it to the Lord Yahweh undaunted. We want to be presented to the Lord undaunted. So we have to be spiritually minded, seeing ourselves in the spirit and seeing the things in the spirit that needs to be worked on. And the things in the spirit, how do we look in the spirit? That's how we need to be viewing ourselves. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Whatever your purpose is, why you're doing something or the acts or why you're doing it, it doesn't mean anything if you're not doing it in the right spirit. If you're not doing it with the right intention and the right heart, it doesn't mean anything. It's vainglory. How do you look in the spirit? How do you look in the spirit? How? This is how we have to examine ourselves each and every day. It's not about what we do. It's not about just works. Works without faith are dead. 
We can be doing all things with the wrong heart and the wrong intentions, but it look good to men. How do you look in the spirit? Are you beautiful? Is your spirit ugly inside? When the whole company of mingling of such colors has come together, I'm going to read this again. Acts of John chapter 29. But do thou become to me a good painter like Homedes? Thou hast colors which he giveth thee through me, who painteth all of us for himself. So is Yache painting us. He's painting a picture to see what we actually look like. Yache, who knoweth the shapes and appearances and postures and dispositions and types of our souls. And the colors wherewith I bid thee paint are these. Faith in Allah Hayyam, knowledge, Allah Hayyamly fear, friendship, communion, meekness, kindness, brotherly love, pureness, simplicity, tranquility, fearlessness, grieflessness, sobriety, and the whole band of colors that painteth the likeness of thy soul. If you don't know what the word means, please look them up, please. And even now raiseth up thy members that were cast down and leveleth them. That will lift it up. Tendeth thy bruises and healeth thy wounds, and order thy hair that will disarray, and washeth thy face, and chasteneth thy eyes, and purgeth thy bowels, and emptieth the belly, and cutteth off that which is beneath it. And in a word, when the whole company is of mingling of such colors has come together into thy soul, it shall present it to our Lord Yahche undaunted. It says, all these things have to enter into our soul. Whole. And firm of shape. Whole and firm of shape. That means that we're complete. And we're firm in it. Unmovable. Not wavering. Strong. Sturdy. That's what you should be examining yourself by. That's the goal. Not how men see you. The scriptures attest to it. Through men, you'll never be perfect. If you're waiting to be seen perfect in the sight of men, you're going to be waiting forever. Kasa, can you get those scriptures for me so that we can see that you will never be perfect in the sight of men, but in the sight of Allah, we can be perfect. That's the goal. That's what we need to get to. That's what we need to be striving for, not for what men think of us or how we look in the sight of men. Right, because even Paul talked about that if he yet pleased men, he wouldn't be a servant of Christ in Galatians 1 and 10. So in this journey, keeping our eyes set on pleasing Allah, there are going to come times where we have to offend men, knowing that we can't be perfect in their sight, but we're seeking to be perfect in the sight of Allah Hayyam. And Clement touched on it in First Clement chapter 21, verse 5, where he said, Let us rather give offense to foolish and senseless men who exalt themselves and boast in the arrogance of their words than to Allah Hayyam. And Asher touched on that understanding of doing what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam, though men may not see us as right. In Asher chapter 4, verse 1, and then verse 3 to 5, it says, For good men, even they that are of single face, though they be thought by them that are double faced to sin, are just before Allah Hayyam. Verse 3, One man hateth the merciful and unjust man, and the man who committed adultery and fasted, this too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole work is good, because he followed the Lord's example, in that he accepteth not the seeming good as the genuine good. Another desireth not to see a good day with them that riot, lest he defile his body and pollute his soul. This too is double faced, but the whole is good, for such men are like to stags and to hides, because in the manner of wild animals, they seem to be unclean, but they are altogether clean because they walk in the zeal of the Lord and abstain from what Allah also hateth, 
and forbiddeth by his commandments, warding off the evil from the good. Asher chapter 6 verse 3 do you therefore, my children, keep the law of Ahaya, and give not heed unto evil as unto good, but look unto the thing that is really good, and keep it in all the commandments of the Lord, having your conversation therein, and resting therein. It's interesting to look unto the things that are really good. It will lead us to look unto the law, which is spiritual, and the commandments, which are good. And to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, because the fruits of the Spirit are in all goodness, according to the teachings of Paul. So, doing as Asher said, by looking unto the thing that's really good, it causes to mind the things of the Spirit, like you were talking about. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson. Um, please check out the series on these lessons in of internal spiritual growth, overcoming the struggles of the flesh, and growing into being a true spiritual believer. If you want to make Hebrew Readers your church home, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We'd love to have you. Um, we thank you guys for continually supporting the videos, supporting the lessons. Um, please check out the website, www.hebrewreaders.com. We do all these things for you guys. We love you guys. We want to see you grow. And may you pray for us as we pray for you all. In the name of Ahaya, in the name of Yache, we pray and we glorify. Peace to all you. And Shalom.